All right, so you probably just watched the introduction to logarithms lecture, and so you know what a logarithm is. And you also completed the review on the properties of exponents, which is extremely important to, um, to this lecture, because the key to understanding the properties of logarithms is the understanding the properties of exponents. And that's because the log is the exponent. Drill that into your head. The log is the exponent. All right, the log is the exponent on the base um, that gives you the result y, the thing that you're taking the log of. Okay, so we talked about the definition of, lo of logarithm last time, and um, and we worked on re rewriting logarithmic equations as exponential equ equations, and also exponential equations as logarithmic equations. So. The first properties we're going to talk about today are um, are properties that come directly from the definition of a logarithm. Okay, so for example, the log base b of b is one. Why? If we write rewrite it as in exponential form, it's obvious, right? Because b to the one is b, right? One is the exponent on b that gives you b. Okay, so again, you just really have to drill that definition of logarithm into your head. All right, the second one here, the log base b of one is equal to zero. Why is that? It's obvious if you rewrite it in exponential form, right? Because b to the zero is equal to one. All right, so zero is the exponent on b that would give you one. In fact, on any base, anything to the zero power gives you one, so. And then these next two, uh, I would consider them inverse properties because, again, the log is the inverse of an exponential function. And you know, if you recall from probably you did this in one, uh, 108, if you recall, the inverse of uh, the original function should give you x. In addition, the function, or the, if you uh, apply the function to the inverse, you also get, oops, I forgot my equal sign, equals x, okay? So that's essentially what's happening here. We are, the input to the logarithm is b to the x, and so we get x back, all right? Now you can also rewrite this in exponential form. You could say, okay, well, here's the base, here's my exponent. What is the, what is the um, exponent on b that gives me b to the x. Well, of course, it's x, right? So, all right, so, and then this is just written in exponential form. It's just that same equation written in exponential form, okay? Now, so this is the log to the exponent, right? Or, or sorry, a logarithm with um, the exponential function as the input. Um, and this is, the second one is just the rever reverse. Essentially, we've got, um, the exponential function with the log as the input, right? So this is our log um, function as the input to the exponential function, all right? So um, you can see that if you just think about what a log is, the log base b of x is the exponent on b that gives you x. And if you're raising b to that power, then it's going to give you x, okay? So, um, so these I would consider inverse properties because the log is the inverse of an exponential uh, equation and the exponential is the inverse of the logarithmic equation. So um, essentially if we said, for example, that uh, f of x is equal to b to the x, then f inverse of x would be the log of x. And so um, if we put b to the x in to the inverse, we should get x. If we put um, the log <laughs> Uh, into the or the the inverse into the original function, we get x. Okay, so all right. So in example one, let's go on to example one here, and it's just a matter of practicing these properties that we just learned. Okay, so what? Okay, this is natural log. We're using natural log, which has a base of e. So we're at this natural log of e is asking what power of e do we raise e to? to get e. <laughs> well, it's just going to be 1, all right? Or you could use this first property here. It's essentially using that first property because the base is e. So the natural log um, of e is 1, okay? Same way over here. The base on the common logarithm is 10. 
Okay, so this is asking what power do we raise 10 to to get 10? Well, it's just one. <laughs> All right, what power do we raise e to to get one? Well, it's going to be zero. Okay, or you could go back up to here and just, you know, recognize that natural log of one, a natural, uh, the log of any, of, of, <laughs> of any base um, of one would be zero. Okay. Same way over here with the base 10 log, the common logarithm was asking, what is the power of 10 we would need um, to raise 10 to in order to get one? And it's going to be zero again. All right, the natural log of e to the third power. Well, we're asking what power would we need to raise e to in order to get e to the third power, right? So it's going to be the third power, right? The power of the exponent will be three, all right? Or you can use, um, I guess we're using this property right there, right? Because the base is e and we've got an exponential input. All right, the, the uh, common logarithm of 10 to the seventh. Okay, again, we're just asking what, what power of 10 gives us 10 to the seventh? Well, seven, right? Um, all right, so and then these last two are using this final property, e to the natural log of eight, okay? Um, so um, the natural log of eight is the exponent on e that gives you eight. So if we raise e to that power, we will get eight. Okay. Same way with the base 10 log, right? Um, the log of 14, this log of 14 is asking what power do we raise 10 to in order to get 14? Now we don't have to know what it is, but we're raising 10 to that power. So it's going to give us 14. All right. So, um, that's example one. And um, I will meet you in the next video and we'll talk about the equality property of logarithms.